to explain further what uh, what happens during the uh, the quantity extraction phase so during the activation of the model, I have a uh, number of examples. Uh, all cubes to illustrate that er everything that comes in is really a cube or another shape, of course, but it's a collection of polygons. That's what we get. We, we don't know any of the other behavior unless it's a specific element type, such as a door, in which case we derive the uh, the property like width and height from CAD because we explicitly told the publisher to include that in the publish operation. So this is uh, is a cube which looks a lot like a slab. So there will be an attribute uh, that says this should behave as a slab in the vehicle office environment. Based on that characteristic, a collection of algorithms will be executed that treat the collection of polygons in a certain way. So behavior uh, of geometry in vehicle office is defined as the set of quantity extraction algorithms that is executed. So for this cube one, we have determined that it should behave as a slab, which means that we need volume, uh, both the gross and net. Uh, we need edge surface area, plan surface area, so top and bottom. Um, probably if there is a hole in there, we want to get the whole surface area and whole volume as well. And then for slabs, of course, we want to get the uh, perimeter of it as, as, as well. Volume is a quantity that is calculated using a, um, a module inside the, the, the takeoff manager, which is capable of analyzing solids and just solids. So in order to calculate a volume, you need a a closed piece of geometry. If you have an, an open piece of geometry, so let's say this side misses, the volume would flow out. If, if it were water, the volume would be gone. So if that is the case, the co-office will not be able to calculate that volume. It is classified in that case as bad geometry. Sometimes it happens during the published operation. It is not always that the CAD application is sufficiently accurate to give us the polygons in such a way that a closed body is the result. So, of course, in Vico Office, that results in the warning triangle, which doesn't mean that Vico Office is a bad piece of software. It means that the geometry that we received from the CAD application and was, did not result in, in a closed body and therefore volume could not be calculated. So both net volume and gross volume are ca calculated that way. So that's a, a little module that we call for each element and that module returns the volume or the, the net and gross volume values. Ah, that was a tough one. Edge surface area is another type of calculation that takes place during the activation. And we calculate those numbers using classification of surfaces. I already mentioned that we publish the the points. So in this case for the for the red line, the point here, the point there, the point there, the point there, plus the loop that connects them. So that is the, the polygon that defines the surface. So this would be loop one. We'll have another loop over here, loop two, another loop over there, six loops in total. So the collection of that six loops is what makes the, the slab appear as it does. Now each loop has a direction. And the direction of the loop is determined by its normal vector. Each loop is defined in a certain direction, so that may be clockwise or counterclockwise. Depending on its direction, the arrow points either this way or that way. It's like a, a corkscrew. Depending on the direction of that arrow, we classify that surface. 
So what we have in addition to the, the normal vector, I'll sketch that in blue, is the project's vertical. So that's Z. Now what we can do is determine the angle over here. That gives us a, a certain value. And we just apply rules to that. So if the angle is between uh, 90 and minus 90, so um, is that uh, 270 degrees, uh, we classify it as an edge. The way we classify that is different per element type, so that defines the, the behavior of element types in vehicle office. So for a slab that's an edge, uh, we'll look at a cube that looks like a wall later on as well. In case of a wall, we may have wall ends and reference side surface, opposite side of the reference surface. Uh, so the way we, we label those, those uh, surfaces depends on the element type. In this case, it's, it's edge. We do that for all of the, uh, the polygons. So in the end, we have a collection of edges, we have a collection of tops, and we have a collection of bottoms. And then when we finish with that particular element, we add them up. So the sum of all edges will become the edge surface area. And the sum of all tops will become the top surface area, etc. Let's look at another example. The, the top polygon is, is this one. So again, we have four points. And because the, the direction that we got from the CAD application is like this, it means that this surface points upward. Because it points upward, it is between uh, 45 degrees and uh, 135 degrees. So again, we can determine a range of, of angles. And if that is the case, uh, we classify it as, as top. This is a top. Now, the number 45 is something that is hard-coded. You cannot tweak that in Vico Office yet. Which means that if I have a sloped slab, otherwise known as a roof, <laughs> which is exactly under an angle of 45 degrees, Big office will say, well, wait a minute, I don't know what to do with exactly 45 degrees. So then you have, again, a, a red warning triangle that lets you know, okay, the automated algorithm wasn't able to analyze it in such a way that it could return a definite answer. So therefore, you need to do it yourself. You need to use the painting mechanism to solve that issue. Very simple workaround, of course, is to put that slab under an angle of 44 degrees, but that may or may not be possible. What also happens, I, I did not type that in here as a possible issue, is that the direction of the uh, polygon that defines a surface is provided to us incorrectly. So the way it was stored in the CAD application was not valid. So it, it may happen that instead of pointing upward, this normal vector goes like this. If that is the case, we will have two bottom surface areas. Because pointing down means we assume that that polygon, that surface, is at the bottom of the thing that looks like a slab. So then I have double the quantity for bottom surface area and zero quantity for top surface area. Top surface area will be a red warning triangle which means I need to solve it. I need to, to paint it. 